A warm welcome to you all from Harton and Cleden Park Churches. May the Lord God our Father bless you during this time together. O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Our shelter from the stormy blast And our eternal home Beneath the shadow of thy throne Thy saints have dwelt secure Sufficient is thine arm alone, and our defense is sure. Before the hills in order stood, or earth received her frame. From everlasting Thou art God To endless use the same A thousand ages in Thy sight Are like an evening gone Short as the watch that ends the night Before the rising sun Time like an ever-rolling stream There's all its suns away Fly forgotten as a dream Dies at the opening day O oh God, our help in ages past Our hope for years to come Be thou our guide while troubles last And our eternal home The Lord be with you and also with you the Lord our God reigns. Let us rejoice and shout for joy and give him glory. Let us pray. Lord, direct our thoughts. Teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. We have heard the good news of Christ and have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with us. He is our stronghold. God will help at the break of day. God is our refuge and strength ready to help whenever we are in trouble. We will not fear even if the earth shakes and the mountains topple into the sea. Come now and look, 
all the works of the Lord, the awesome things he has done on earth. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord is with us. He is our stronghold. God will help us at the break of day. Let's pray. God of glory, touch our lips with the fire of your spirit, that we with all creation may rejoice to sing your praise. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Thus says the Lord concerning the prophets who lead my people astray, who cry peace when they have something to eat, but declare war against those who put nothing into their mouths. Therefore it shall be night to you without vision, and darkness to you without revelation. The sun shall go down upon the prophets, and the day shall be black over them. The seers shall be disgraced, and the diviners put to shame. They shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer from God. But as for me, I am filled with power, with the Spirit of the Lord, and with justice and might, to declare to Jacob his transgression, and to Israel his sin. Hear this, you rulers of the house of Jacob, and chiefs of the house of Israel, who abhor justice and pervert all equity, who build Zion with blood, and Jerusalem with wrong. Its rulers give judgment for a bribe, its priests teach for a price, its prophets give oracles for money. Yet they lean upon the Lord and say, Surely the Lord is with us, no harm shall come upon us. Therefore because of you Zion shall be ploughed as a field, Jerusalem shall become a heap of ruins, and the mountain of the house a wooded height. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. You remember our labour and toil, brothers and sisters. We worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you while we proclaimed to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses and God also how pure, upright and blameless our conduct was toward you believers. As you know, we dealt with each one of you like a father with his children, urging and encouraging you and pleading that you lead a life worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. We also constantly give thanks to God for this, that when you received the word of God that you heard from us, you accepted it, not as a human word, but as what it really is, God's word, which is also at work in you believers. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. As Jesus came out of the temple and was going away, his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. Then he asked them, You see all these, do you not? Truly, I tell you, not one stone will be left here upon another, all will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the age? Jesus answered them, Beware that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead many astray, and you will hear of wars and rumours of wars, See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All this is but for the beginning of birth pangs. Then they will hand you over to be tortured, and you will be put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will fall away, and they will betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. But anyone who endures to the end will be saved. And this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed through the, throughout the world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you O Christ. Christ. On the face of it, today's Gospel has a brutalistic message. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. Never in my lifetime have these words been so poignant and so concerning. I guess being four and a half months old at the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis was probably equally as worrying, but that's a minor technicality as I slept and drank milk most of my way through that one. Jesus predicts, not one stone shall be left here upon another. Some forty years after Jesus said this, there was a widespread Jewish revolution against the Romans in Palestine, and whilst there were a few early successes, Ultimately, Roman soldiers under the leadership of future Emperor Titus crushed the rebels. In AD 70, Jerusalem was levelled, including the temple, just as Jesus had predicted. And there would be famines and earthquakes in various places. Nine years after the destruction of Jerusalem at the hands of the Romans, the Romans themselves suffered a major natural disaster when Vesuvius destroyed Pompeii and Herculaneum. By this time, Titus, who had led the siege and the raising of Jerusalem, had been emperor for around four or five months. Coincidence? Karma? I'll leave that one for the scholars and the historians. We live in a troubled and worrying world, and we can only pray for a way out. We pray that the politicians and those in authority can find a peaceful solution before any more unnecessary bloodshed. Prayer has never been more important than now, as we look for hope and peace. Many of us will remember the 1970s TV programme MASH. In an episode, Hawkeye says to a priest, War isn't hell. War is war, and hell is hell. And of the two, war is a lot worse. The priest responds, how do you figure that out, Hawkeye? Easy came the reply. Who goes to hell? Why sinners, I believe, says the priest. Exactly, says Hawkeye. There are no innocent bystanders in hell. War is chock full of them. Little kids, cripples, old ladies. In fact, except for some of the brass, almost everyone involved is an innocent bystander. Thanks to social media, we are subjected to disinformation and need to discern God's truth. Both the passage from Micah and in today's Gospel 
warn of false prophets. In a world where we hear of so much negativity and are subjected to disinformation from social media and there are times when the news can also be portrayed as a little one-sided, we need to be wary of messages giving false promises and half-truths. God does provide and God does bless but we also need to analyse the sources in which we hear these messages. In the Gospel assigned for last Sunday, had we not used the All Saints Day liturgy, we would have heard that the greatest two commandments, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, and the second is that you should love your neighbour as yourself. If only everyone on this planet unconditionally could love their neighbour as themselves, then we'd be halfway to achieving world peace. But sadly, life is never as simple as that, and our hearts go to the people of Israel, Palestine, the Ukraine, and everywhere else that there is conflict in this troubled world, the innocent bystanders. Some of you may have listened to the radio programme Desert Island Discs at some point since it was first broadcast in January 1942. During the programme, the castaways asked to choose eight audio recordings, usually but not always music, a book and a luxury item that they would take if they were to be cast away on a desert island. Whilst discussing their life and the reasons for their choices, they are also given a copy of the Bible and the complete works of Shakespeare. Earlier this year, I was challenged that if I was to be cast away on the desert island, I wasn't going to be given a full Bible, nor would I be given a book of the Bible. I could only have one chapter, and what would it be? It was tempting to go for John 1, my favourite Christmas reading, but I selected 1 Corinthians 13, because I believe that we have a loving God, and if we focused on love rather than hate, then our communities would be a much better place, and if our communities were a better place, then the wider world would have the opportunity to follow suit. 1 Corinthians 13 is the gift of love. It is so easy to get angry, and we have, and we have enough justification to be angry in the current climate. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son not to condemn the world, but to save us from our sins. Love is precious, and it is the cornerstone of our hope that a peaceful solution to all the world's conflicts can be found. In the Gospel, Jesus gives us hope, and because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold, but anyone who endures to the end will be saved. Jesus is sending the message of hope. It's a marathon, not a sprint. How often have we heard that phrase, and I for one should know. But love is patient, it is kind, and it never ends. In my old male voice choir days, a regular piece from our repertoire was Let There Be Peace on Earth, which can also be found in some of the hymn books. It goes, Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as a father, brothers all are we. Let me walk with my brother in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. During our non-communion services we pray to a troubled world, peace from Christ to a searching world, love from Christ, to a waiting world, hope from Christ. Jesus gives us hope. Today's gospel may not seem that way, but let us love our neighbour and encourage our neighbours to love their neighbours unconditionally. The snowballing effect would be so powerful, and let us trust in the power of prayer in our daily lives. Amen. God calls us to peace. In God's justice is our peace. Christ calls us to be God's people. 
in Christ is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, this month we remember the anguish and carnage of war. We pray that you may soften the hearts of the people of war, that they may see beyond their hatreds and come to realise the suffering they are inflicting on the innocent bystanders around them. Strengthen the people of peace and bring hope and healing to all caught up in wars, remembering especially the peoples of Israel Palestine and Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those affected by natural disasters, floods, famine, droughts, earthquakes. You made us stewards of the earth you have created. Help us to be mindful of the needs of others and find ways to reduce the damage we have already caused. We pray for all those who have been affected by the recent storms, Bebet and Chiron. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our Lord. prayer. All around us, the natural world is closing down for the winter. The days are getting shorter and a chill slides under the door. Help us not to close down our hopes and dreams, our warmth and welcome. Keep us hospitable to others and open to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we bring to you all those we know who are sick or suffering. As we pray for them now, we reach out to them in love, knowing that you will use our love for their benefit. Give to each the peace, light and healing of your loving presence. We thank you also for all those who work to care for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Lord, you breathe life into us in our mother's wombs. Help us to not be afraid of death, but to remember that he is the gentle brother who comes to bring us to our place in your heavenly kingdom. We ask you at this time to comfort the family and friends of Alma Ainsley, and at their years mind to remember Dorothy Wake Thompson, Andrew Hawker, Jean Morn, William Stokes, John Campbell, Mary Matheson, and Joshua Rodham Luthwaite. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Help us to love our neighbours and encourage our neighbours to love their neighbours unconditionally, so that to a troubled world may we bring peace from Christ. To a searching world may we bring love from Christ. To a waiting world may we bring hope from Christ. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. prayer. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers for the sake, sake of your Son, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. And together we join in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Kindle in our hearts, O God, the flame of love which never ceases, that it may burn in us giving light to others. May we shine forever in your temple, set on fire with your eternal light. Amen. Though we are many, we are one body in Christ. We belong to one another. By God's grace, we have different gifts. 
we will use them in faith. Rejoice in hope, stand firm in trouble, be constant in prayer. Filled with his spirit, we will serve the Lord. Eternal giver of love and life, your son Jesus Christ has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news that we proclaim. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we end our time together with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. In Christ alone my hope is found He is my light, my strength, my song This cornerstone, this solid ground Firm through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are stilled, when striving cease My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones He came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died. Body lay, light of the world by 